What's up everybody? Thanks for tuning in. We have a dreamy 1990 Jeep Comanche with some drivability issues. So let's take a look. All right, I didn't catch it on camera, but it, let me just do it again. Fire it up. I was running for a little while and then boom, it just dies. Let's do it again. Okay, I'm gonna throttle. And it's dead. All right, well, those symptoms, the fact that it fires up, it runs for a while, then dies, and the way it dies makes me feel like it's a fuel delivery issue. So for our next step, we're gonna hook up a fuel pressure gauge to the fuel rail. This has a Schrader valve, nice and easy access. So we'll hook up our gauge, cycle the key, we'll watch the fuel pressure, and then we'll start the vehicle and we'll see any change. If it drops or falls down below a certain amount, then we know for sure that it is a fuel delivery issue. So that's what our gut is saying. Let's go get the tool, hook it up, and confirm it. All right, so Schrader valve's right here towards the front of the vehicle. Get our fitting, hook up our gauge. So I'll hook you up in a spot where you can see this better. Let me just do that now for you. So that fuel pressure barely even did anything. Let me do it again. Yeah, so we're like at 10 PSI-ish. This is definitely fuel delivery related. We're gonna jack the vehicle up, go underneath, and get a look at the fuel pump and fuel filter. All right, under the vehicle, this is the driver's side or the left-hand side. Fuel filter, doesn't look that old, uh, but looks can be deceiving. So this is an area that could be clogged. So the fuel pump pumps in this direction. Maybe this is a restriction not allowing a good flow in that direction towards the engine possibility let me run you down the line so this is our connector so we should have a power a ground and i believe fuel level sensor so what we want to know is is this pump getting a good solid power and ground or is there any kind of voltage drop or resistance not allowing this pump to go full bore so let me get my multimeter test light and just double check powers and grounds see where we are I disconnected the connector. I have one lead on one end, one lead on the other. I believe that's power and ground. And then it's hooked up to my test light. If I'm not mistaken, this vehicle needs a cranking signal before it turns the fuel pump on. It may do like an initial prime and then go out. And then when it sees a crank signal, it energizes the fuel pump. So I'm gonna go in the vehicle. I'm gonna set you up so you can see this really good. We should get this light to light up nice and bright. All right, that should be good. That should be a long enough crank to see whether it was working or not. Let me review the footage. All right, so our powers and grounds are good. Not worried about that. We're getting plenty of current going to that fuel pump. So the last thing I wanna check before we replace this fuel pump, because the fuel pump is sending some fuel to the engine. That's why it starts up. But why isn't it sending enough volume? Is it because the fuel pump just can't put out that amount of volume? Or is it because there's a blockage along the way? So we wanna check the fuel pressure pre-fuel filter. So we're gonna disconnect the fuel filter inlet, hook up our fuel pressure gauge there, and check flow or check pressure. We won't be able to check flow volume, but we can check pressure. If we're getting similar pressure as we were at the engine Schrader valve, then it's definitely the pump. If we're getting better pressure, then it may be the fuel filter. So let me get all that uh, set up, see what we got. All right, so I'm gonna pull off this back one here we already know what pressure is like in front of the fuel filter because we got that at the engine so we just want to know what it looks like behind the fuel filter let's pull this off if all it is is a fuel filter that'd be sweet okay you may drip fuel so make sure you got glasses gloves whatever ppe 
you may need. I hate working on fuel. Pretty good. I wonder if it'll come off the fuel filter better. Yeah, it's gonna come off the filter better. So let's just do that. Then we'll hook up our gauge. It'll drip for a little bit. So we'll put this fitting on. Nope, that's a bigger fitting. I'll be back. Okay, so maybe this will fit. There we go. Tighten this up over the top of it. We're just looking for a change. All right, so it's not the exact right fitting. Okay, so let me figure out how to set you up for this. All right, so that should be good. Let me go ahead and crank it over. See if our numbers change. Anything? Let me look at the footage. So that was a little unexpected. We got over 30 PSI coming from the pump. All right, so we're gonna run another test. I got the fuel line off this side of the filter. I'm gonna just do a flow test, not check for pressure. I wanna check for volume. Are we getting enough volume here? Because we still could be dealing with a fuel pressure regulator issue. If it's not allowing the fuel rail to pump up and it's just all dumping back into the tank, that's a possibility. So I wanna see, are we even getting volume flow from this filter? So let me crank the engine and it should gush. I think that's enough of a test. Let me look at the footage. I'm glad we did that test. We are getting fuel pressure and volume coming from that fuel pump. So I believe this vehicle does not need a fuel pump. But for some reason, the fuel rail doesn't have enough pressure to feed the injectors. So let's figure out how we can block off the return line to the tank and see if that makes a difference in our fuel rail pressure. I went underneath, plugged the fuel filter back in, got that all tightened up. So this is our fuel pressure regulator right here. It's a metal line coming off of that down and around. And hopefully you can see it right there is where it connects into a rubber or soft line. So I already, you can't see my tool, but I already went down underneath, clamped that off. So there is no return fuel line at this moment. So now we'll go in, check our pressures and see if it'll run a little better. If it does run better with that return clamped off, then we have an issue with our fuel pressure regulator. Here we go. This is just making sure that the pump isn't shutting off while the vehicle's running. So I just have it back probed to positive, negative. While everything's plugged in, we'll start the vehicle. And then when it dies, we'll make sure that the pump was still running that whole time. So I'm in the work van, I had to take a water break, clear my head, try to rethink why, what is happening. And I just reviewed that last footage of me trying to get the test light to light up 
during it running to see if the fuel pump was cutting out uh, at all. And I wasn't realizing that during crank, it was on. But as soon as the engine started and fired up, we lost that light. So by the time I went underneath to check to see uh, if we lost signal or not, we had already lost signal. So I was like, what's happening? I thought I wasn't getting a good connection and my back probes and stuff weren't getting a good connection. But in reality, it was as soon as the car fires up, we lose power to the fuel pump. So that's an interesting uh, symptom. I'm glad I checked that. So during crank, we're getting enough volume. The fuel pump is turning on, we're getting enough pressure as you saw at the fuel filter. But as soon as this thing lights up, it, it kicks that fuel pump off. So now we're diagnosing in a different direction. Uh, no longer looking at a fuel pump issue, but we're looking at a command issue or a power supply to the pump. That's our issue. So is it, uh, like I mentioned, a command? Is it a sensor not sensing? So is it an input issue or is it an output issue? So that, that's where we're going. So I'm glad uh, I took a break. Sometimes you just have to clear your head, take a break for a minute, step back and reassess what you've done and what possibilities are there. So let's uh, keep diagnosing and hopefully we can get this thing up and running. Uh, according to the manual, this is the fuel pump relay. It is pulled out. I started it up to check some things and it's running. So it's running without the fuel pump relay. Um, and I just went over here to check the ballast resistor and I bypassed the ballast resistor. Uh, and that's all I've done. So that's weird. We're still a little low on pressure. I would think that would be a little higher but this is definitely different than it was acting uh, before. So because I've been cranking it for a while, I'm gonna just let it run a little bit and um, charge up the battery. One thing I did but didn't really explain was I bypassed this ballast resistor. This ballast resistor is on the driver's side uh, fender well. The only thing this is for is to reduce pump noise. So just to doing a quick test, if you bypass that and it starts working then it's possible that that ballast resistor is no good one way to check let me set you up is just doing a quick ohms across this it should be right around one ohm and we have 1.1 ohms that's perfect so what that tells us is one our resistance is right on and two this isn't open or broken inside but you can bypass that ballast resistor by just jumping these two wires together. And that could be a quick uh, bypass test just to check whether or not your resistor is good. But on this, I bypassed it. Uh, it freakishly started working on us, but then I plugged it back in and it was still working. So it's not the resistor. Um, could it be a loose connection on the resistor? Absolutely. Let me unplug it. I'm gonna start it up and notice the symptoms. Notice that start and stall, and it does it the exact same way. Let me go under and show you. So ballast resistor still unplugged. Notice while I'm cranking, you'll get that light again, just like before, and it'll go out as soon as it starts. So why would we get power during a crank and the power go away after the vehicle started? Well, it has to do with how this system is wired. During a crank, the fuel pump gets its power directly from the starter relay. Then once it's started and the key is no longer in the start position, but back to the run position because the engine's running, it switches power from the starter relay to the fuel pump relay. The fuel pump relay routes its power through the ballast resistor to the fuel pump. So without that ballast resistor plugged in or maybe a bad connection, that's my theory. At the ballast resistor, the pump would turn on during crank and then immediately go out once the engine is running. So that's my theory. Uh, it makes sense. We are able to recreate those symptoms by having the ballast resistor unplugged. It's possible when I unplugged it to bypass it, do some tests with it, and then plugged it back in, uh, I made a solid connection. 
therefore fixing the problem without realizing it. So I'm gonna take this bad boy on a test drive just to confirm, hit some bumps and take it for a good little spin. And uh, if it doesn't act up, I believe we are good to go. Just a side note, if you were to take battery power and plug it into this side of the ballast resistor, and just jump it into here, the pump will turn on. That might be useful to somebody who is just trying to diagnose stuff. If you run power directly to here, you should hear that pump turn on. If this thing breaks down and we need to uh, get it home, that's what we'll end up doing. All right, we are rolling. power it's not cutting out or anything pedal to the metal nice it's running really good so no hesitations no skipping I say we're done all right there you go that is it for the Jeep for now this is a new customer so you never know we may be back to fix some other things. This Jeep definitely needs some help. Well, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you on the next one.